Hey what's up guys, it's Apollo Chia here back with the next part of what if Naruto had Asura's memories and before continuing this if you haven't please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you like the content of this channel and without further ado let's continue with our story. Previously, then you should know we are here to discuss the enactment of the 9th M Hokage's Clan Restoration Act. Now we continue. Clan Restoration Act? So we repeat it. She could see where this conversation was going, so it was Uchiha business after all. Hi, CRA is a law passed by the Nandime to help prevent the extinction of clan, especially those with Kakagen Kais, hidden injutsus or any other things like the that can be passed down through a clan. Amura elaborated. How? The Uchiha asked, though she already had a feeling she knew the answer. Kaharu answered, when the clan only has one member left, as soon as he or she is a chunin or turn 18, the person will be made a clan head. If the Sikon is a male, he will have a harem of wives to produce offsprings of the clan. The woman will be then part of the clan as well. If the Sikon is a woman, well, she will be forced to mate with several men to increase the chances of impregnation. Otherwise, she will have to go through insemination. Sari gritted her teeth. Things were looking bad for her future. The last thing she wanted was to be treated like a breeding machine. Or worse, an animal if insanimation was anything to go by. Her first child was supposed to be born by love, not due to restore her clan, damn it. She refused to have her husband by some random old pervert who signed up just to bang the last Uchiha. She, she wanted Naruto to be the father of her children. Nor for the first time, she realized how badly she loved and needed the blonde Uzumaki. Ruzen watched her reaction with concern, knowing she would have objections. What, what if I refuse? Danza replied almost instantly and harshly. You cannot fight the log girl. If we have to, we will lock you up in a cell and bind you to a wall, where every day you will have sex till you are impregnated. The first male to successfully impregnate you will be your husband. Seiri's eyes watered. The Hokage glared at Danza for such a response silently chastising him for putting such a burden on teenager girl. It was practically amounting to rape except that it was legal now. Tears welled up in her eyes, but she would absolutely die for or before she would allow herself to show weakness before elders. I see. Thank you for your time. She quickly dismissed herself from the room and ran home with her emotions spotted up. She died she didn't even have the heart to return to training once she came up with that conclusion and ran home. She just broke down and sobbed and uncontrollably let go of her emotions. Are you sure that was the right move, Danzo? Ruzen asked, worriedly. Her loyalties were already loose, knowing her desire for vengeance. To add on to that with the CRA might just be the proverbial last straw that would cause her to leave the village. You are too soft, Hiruzen. I'll keep track of her to ensure she doesn't try to leave the village. The elder spoke before standing up. He left the advisor's room, leaving the other two dispersed as well. With Naruto later, he had just landed from a trust fall. Standing up, he looked around and asked, Kakashi sensei, why is Sarichan not back yet? It had been an hour since she left and there was no sign of her. Kakashi shrugged council meetings generally did not last longer than half an hour. If he had guessed the nature of the meeting correctly, he knew why she wasn't back. A slight amount of guilt was felt on his part. I'm not sure. Let's take a break. You can go find her. At those words, Naruto disappeared in a blur. Sakura didn't even have a chance to ask to go along with him. Kashi gave a mock sigh. Kids these days, he said, with Naruto. Where the hell are the counselors anyway, he thought. He then recalled something and kneeled down. Closing his eyes, bringing his Tairiatsu on in Tairiatsu no in to his chest, he muttered. Sensory Jutsu. He could feel multiple chakra signatures, but none of them was the one he was looking for. Naruto tried to focus on Sayori's unique chakra. Being the transmigrant of Intra, it was powerful as well. Underlying the surface of her chakra was hatred, making it a deep purple in color. Got it. He stood up and leapt to the nearest rooftops. The further he ran, he more. He recognized his surroundings from the previous time. He ran across the rooftops with her. She's at home. 
This puzzles him greatly. Shouldn't she be at training grounds after the council meeting? Unless he had a bad feeling about this. He picked up his speed, becoming an orange blur over the heads of the villagers who were carrying out their daily routines. When he reached her co compound entrance, he got a negative emotions coming from a single source. Fear, worry and anxiety. Yeah, bye. Naruto cursed. Our worry troubled him. What exactly had transpired in the meeting? Sir John, Naruto called as he reached the main house where she resided. Upon hearing her name, the girl inside whipped her tears and stood up from her spot, where she had been crying for quite a while. The more she had thought about it, the more it sickened her that she would be used in such a way. The fact that she couldn't do anything made it worse, bringing even more tears. However, she couldn't afford for Naruto to find out. What would he think of her then? Also, she could not appear weak at such a time, especially not when he... She knew that Naruto would surely fuss over her about it. Quickly, she straightened her crumbled Atari and moved to the answer door. Hi, Naruto. What brings you here? She asked, soundingly, uncharacteristically cheery. The frown on his face told her that he didn't buy it. How are you doing, Sarah John? Why, I'm fine, she replied. I'll go get a drink. She was about to turn and walk into the kitchen when Naruto grabbed her wrist. Please don't lie to me, Sir John. If you were fine, you wouldn't return to training. Also, you wouldn't have puffy red eyes or a crazed groan. Shimata. She cursed internally. She had no time to prepare for his unexpected visit. And you, even if you could hide all this, I can sense your emotions. Fear and anxiety, stress. You can't hide from me. So please, tell me what happened. Naruto backed in a softer tone. This wasn't the tough Sayuri he knew. This was the young, vulnerable Sayuri from whom he had protected so long ago. Nothing happened, alright? Sayuri retorted. Why do you care so much anyway? Naruto sighed and released her wrist. Sayuri chan, you're an emotional wreck right now. And as a teammate and friend, I'm extremely concerned. Not just because it will affect our performance, but also because your emotional welfare is of my concern too. I care, alright? So please tell me what happened. Sayuri looked up and gazed at him with sad black eyes, which reflected despair. She could no longer hold back and broke down again, this time in front of Naruto. The alarmed Uzumaki brought the emotionally distraught Uchiha into a hug. There, there, there. Don't hold back. Naruto whispered soothingly, rubbing slowly circles in her back. The girl pent up emotions were released in a torrent of fears and tears. Naruto sighed internally as she cried into his chest. At least she finally opened up. Yuchi had snuggled deeper into his embrace, finding comfort in his presence. Sirichan, can you tell me what happened? I I promise I won't tell anyone, if that's help. He requested gently, seeing as how she was emotionally unstable at the moment. He did not want to worsen matters. The girl thought of for a while before reaching a decision. Her crying reduced to a sniffle before she started. It's, it's the Clan Restoration Act. A law created by the Naidaime, the pervert clan extinction to prevent the clan extinction Sayuri explained as she broke the hug because I'm the last Uchiha and a female they plan to have me have sex with several men once I turn 18 or become a Junin and by extension a clan head she said was trembling at the disgust of the thought when one finally impregnates me he will become my husband basically they will keeping me here and using me as a breeding machine to produce more Uchiha's offspring. Naruto blood boiled at such a stupid law. Of course, son Nidaime had his reasons, but the target woman like that? Uchiha Sayori was supposed to be a modern, empowered woman, unfettered by the inadequated gender roles of a bygone era. We were a woman who submitted to a retarded law of the previous generation. And what if you refuse? asked Naruto. Though he had a sickening feeling, he already knew the answer. I'll be locked up in a cell and bound to a wall, where every day I'll have sex till I get impregnated. The first male to successfully impregnate me will be my husband. She put her face down to force. Seeing Naruto was furious was an understatement. Don't worry, sir, John. I will find a loophole in this stupid law, and I will use it to free you. You can count on me. Naruto promised. The Uchiha girl doubted that it would be easy to find a loophole, or any loophole for that, but she was sure 
with a little bit of research, Naruto could think of something. Besides that, she already had her own solution, but she could sense it was suspected by the higher-ups. She looked up at his hair, a hell of celestial gold, his hair, the color of hot desert, sand and lastly into his bright blue eyes, the color of the cloudness sky. In them, she could found comfort and trustworthiness, so much so that even she believed he could help her. Alright then, Naruto, I'll entrust this to you. Please don't tell anyone else. He nodded firmly. I won't. Now please, sir, Richan, follow me to training. As he walked away, Suri took a look at his retreating back and sighed in despair. Her plan to not cause any heartbreak was failing miserably. She had, however, unknowingly gained something out of this emotional episode. As she glanced at the mirror, it reflected her fully matured vermilion eyes with three swirling magatamas. Three months later, Team 7 had accomplished a lot of stuff with the most oblivious achievement wearing their taijutsu which had improved exponentially. Naruto personally had added two weapon styles to his bokijutsu weapon technique, arsenal to Rebo dragon pole and air slashing knives. Basically he had learned how to wield a staff and a pair of butterfly swords. While he did not actively use or keep them as weapons, giving performance and preferences to his sword, they would come in handy when he used six parts sage mode or gudo dama. He sought none other than the third Hokage for a brief bojutsu introduction, while for the butterfly swords he got Tenten to tutor him. Sayori worked on her new showering gun abilities and kenjutsu, as well as integrating her ninjutsu into a uh, taijutsu and kenjutsu katas. Lastly, Sakura improved her support skills, focusing on irio ninjutsu and genjutsu, casting and breaking. Back to Team 7 as a whole, they finally got normal C ranks, but some still escalated to higher ranker missions. In one of them, he met this Takigakure Jinchuriki Fu of the Seven Tails. Team 7 helped her to guard her country's Iono Mizu. It was water, a precious substance which increased one's chakra but decreases one's lifespan. In another mission, Naruto defeated Kazehana Doto, the tyrant of Yuki no Kuni, the land of snow. He killed his brother and predecessor Kazehana Sosetsu for his position as a snow daimyo. The Uzumaki then helped the actress Kazehana Kyoki, daughter of the late daimyo and Doto's niece, claim her birthright as snow country, as snow daimyo as well. The country was renamed as Haru no Kuni, Lands of Spring. The list went on. Naruto added the Daimyo of Lands of Birds, Lands of Vegetable, to reclaim their rights position. In the end of the day, Naruto trained himself to the ground with Shadow Clones. By night, he sneaked into the libraries to research Konoha's laws, especially those directly related to the CRA. As a result, he always slept late and was pretty lethargic during morning training, but Sayori made it to him by making him breakfast. Well, it was another lovely Sunday morning on the 15th of June when Kakashi informed them of the Junin exam's details. Tomorrow morning, report to room 301 in the academy at 9. That's my only instructions for today. You can train by yourself, but I recommend resting as tomorrow will be a big day for you three. Kakashi advised. Thanks, Kakashi sensei, said Naruto. The three again is dispersed to a uh, respective stuff. Naruto wanted to grab a coffee at the nearby coffee shop as he was feeling incredibly fatigued from the previous nights of research. He had made a last-ditch effort to find any remaining things he could use against the Clan Restoration Act. However, the three months deadline had been hit and there was not a single thing he could use to help Sayori out of the predicament. He was extremely frustrated with himself. Also, Sayori had refused to turn down the tuning exam so that he and Sakura could have a chance for promotion and not miss it because of her. The only thing he could come up with now was for her to purposely fail the tuning exams in order to remain again such that the law wouldn't apply to her. But how could he ask that to her? And even then, she would still turn 18 one day. He was shaken out of his thoughts when, a, when he sensed someone was telling him correction, some people. He stopped in his tracks. Seriously, they called his hiding. Clearly, they weren't a threat if their chakra was anything to go by. Three academy level chakras, two male, one female. 
Reveal yourself, Naruto said with a sigh. The poorly disguised box disappeared in a burst of smoke, revealing three coughing kids. I think we put more gunpowder in it, remarked a boy with long blue scarf between coughs. Naruto raised an eyebrow as he observed the three children getting up. The other boy was bespectacled and the girl had two large pigtails. You are? Naruto asked. Sarutobi Konohamaru, the boy with the scarf introduced. I'm Mogi, the girl said, and I'm Udon, the bus spectacled boy explained. A drip of mucus ran down his nostrils. Together we are the Konohamaru corpse, Konohamaru declared. So why are you after me? I'm just a simple guy. After a cup of coffee, that's all. Naruto questioned. Konohamaru replied. We watched you very closely and have decided you are good enough to be our boss. Will you teach us some cool jutsus? Naruto thought. The Hokage's grandson, huh? I suppose he wishes to surpass his grandfather. Living under a shadow can't be any good. Alright then. But before I'll teach you anything, work on your stealth and speed. Naruto advised. Thank you for the tip, boss. Konohamaru explained. All three nodded eagerly and took off running. The Uzumaki shook his head in amusement before applying a henji. One cup of coffee, please, ordered Naruto. Coming right up. Far away, he heard a crying sound, oddly similar to Konohamaru. Alarmed, he quickly paid the cashier. I'll be back in a minute. He rushed over to the scene with dispelling his henji, a boy about his age, dressed in a cat suit, wearing purple war paint, and uh, Sunagakure Haitate was holding Konohamaru by his collar. Next to him was a teal eyed blonde girl with four ponytails and a giant tessin strapped to her back. Kankro, put him down! If he sees us, we're dead, the girl cried to Konohamaru as Konkuro scoffed. Their kid bumped in, this kid bumped into me. I was just going to have some fun. Naruto walked up to two Suneninza. This was an issue between two villages. He would have to try to solve it as diplomatically as possible. Konkuro's son, please put the boy down. He requested politely. Both Sunanin to look, looked at him. The girl thought with a blush, this guy is pretty handsome. In contrast, Conqueror said, Who the heck are you? And why should I log let this brat go? After he knocked into me. I'm sure it was just an accident. And besides, bullying the Hukaga's grandson will cause an international incident. If I have to, I will liberate him with my own hands, said Naruto. Ha! Huh. And what are you gonna? He was cut off short when a kunai flew nearby a tree, grazing his forearm, forcing him to let go of the boy. She's here, best to make my move now, thought Naruto in a burst of smoke. Not a substitution with the kunai and grabbing Konohamaru. Swiftly, he re returned to the other academy student's side. The Konohamaru corpse ran away as quickly as possible. What do you think you are doing? Well, in other villages, came the voice of Sayuri under the shade of the tree leaves, her red glowing eyes looking menacingly. Kankuro took a step back in slight fear. Who the heck are you? That girl is damn hot but dangerous. His eyes nerd. I hate people like you who think they are very clever, and they have a way to deal with people like you. He unstrapped a strange bandage item from his back and set it on the floor. As it tops, there was a truffle of black hair. A puppeteer, not amused. The girl warned. You're using Karasu? I'm not going to be responsible for what you are about to do. Just as Kankra was about to engage Sayuri in combat, a third voice rang out from the other side of the tree trunk as Sayuri was on. Kankro, stop what you are doing before I kill you. That chakra. Naruto thought eyes wisening at the malevolent presence. It was oppressive and voluminous. No doubt a Jinchuriki. Hanging upside down from a bow, he was a redhead with a huge gourd strapped to his back. Itching on his forehead was the kanji for love. Ironically, that seemed to be the last thing on his mind. Kankuro looked just as taken back as Naruto. Kara? He greeted in fear. Quickly returning to the puppet, they called Karasu to its original position. The two occupants of the tree leapt down to the street in their respective groups. Kara declared in monotone, You are a disgrace to our village, Kankuro. Turning to the Konohanin, he continued, I apologize for my brother's deplor deplorable behavior. You, you were a Jinchuriki as well. Aren't you? Naruto asked. Gare is in Abro. Yes. What is your name? And the girl's name. And since I'm asking, I'm Sabuko Nagara. And these are my siblings, Kankuro and Tamari. My name is Uzumaki Naruto. And my teammate here is Uchiha Sayuri. 
said the blonde as Gar let that information sink in. He paused as if talking to somebody in his head. Suddenly, he let out a low laugh, creepy laugh. Mother says you two are strong. I look forward to spilling your blood, Uchiha, and you, Jinchurki of the QB. I shall prove your existence, prove my existence by diminishing yours. Gara spun around and walked away, leaving Naruto puzzled. Kurama answered, If I had to guess, he is the Jinchurki of my brother, Chicago, Chicago the one till Tanaki, known to drive his host crazy by infecting their minds and forcing them to stay awake 24 7. Additionally, he does psychological damage to his host by preventing and pretending to be someone close to them who is dead. Naruto shuddered. No wonder he is so insane. I'd be too if I couldn't sleep in my whole life. One day I'll get his seal fixed. He was snapped out of his mental conversation when he heard Sayori snap fingers in front of him. Naruto. Hello? Or to Naruto, the Uchiha replied. Naruto recovered. Yes. What does he mean when he called the, the Jinchuriki of Kyuubi? Shh. Naruto hushed covering her mouth with his hand. He then brought both of them to a secluded forest in one of the training grounds nearby. Sadly, he averted his case after moving his hands. This will not be an easy question to answer, Sayori chan It's an astronaut secret. You cannot reveal this to anyone else on pain of death. Plus, I don't think I'm ready to tell you yet, uh, unless you promise not to change your opinion of me. Seeing him being so shaken up by her question, it only served to make her more curious. She agreed to his conditions. I I am the Jinjurki of the Nine-Tailed Fox that attacked the village 12 years ago. That means that I am the human container for it, his host. Many people die, including my parents, because of his attack, and some of the villagers hate me with a passion for it. To make things worse, they tell their children to isolate me so I wouldn't have any friends, ever. He then returned to recount it, his horrible childhood causing a few tears to escape his eyes uncontrollably. Sari instinctively hugged him and much to his surprise, she had not pushed him away or thought that he was a monster. She actually accepted him. Don't worry. You have me. Now I know that's why you want to become Hokage so much. It is so that you can gain their acknowledgement. You, well, you can't change the past, but you can change the future. Don't ever give up on your dreams. I believe you will achieve them one day. Thank you, Sir Richard. Not said, feeling slightly embarrassed, and she broke the hug. Uchiha continued, But let me tell you this. You don't become the Hokage to be acknowledged by someone, then one who is acknowledged by everyone becomes the Hokage. Naruto was shocked by such a wise saying. All right then, I'll work hard to become acknowledged by everyone. Sari so pointed out, you are already acknowledged by the population of Nami. Your kind and bright nature makes that easier. It's just that Konoha villagers are prejudiced. Which reminds me, I'll kill those bastards for what they did to you. There's a monkey side. Please don't say rich Jan. It only makes matter worse and translates your reputation as the greatest loss to Chia. They are wrong for taking out their anger on a kid, but I can't understand where they are coming from. It's not their fault that the QB attacked and killed their family on that day. It's only natural that they need someone to vent their wrath and hatred on. So I retorted in frustration, but not on you, I give up. You're too kind. And that's why I love you so much. She mentally added. Well, I have a coffee to pick. See you tomorrow at the Chunin exams. Jane, the next day, Team Kakashi met up at the academy entrance. The three took their applications to the academy reception desk where the shinobi in charge let them in. The Ganin ascended the stairs to the site of many Ganins crowded around the room of 302. The commotion was caused by two Ganins in front of the door, refusing entry to those who tried to enter. Not activated his sensory techniques instead of the two Ganins he detected to chew in his chakra presence. Of course, he could not confirm their rank by chakra alone. So he requested Sayuri check out those two with Sharingan. On it, with a momentary flash of chakra, her optic nerves produced a reaction which activated her extra optic cones, giving her incredible perception and but at the same time altered her vision to immense negative. The onyx eyes of hers took on a bright vermilion hue, with her pupil encircled by three tomos. This did not matter though, as their disguises were already discovered by her Sharingan. As the three Tomas faded away, she supplied. Those two are the gate guards, the Chunins, Izumu and Kotatsu. Also, the room is, is it is in 301. It's 
201. Not a not in confirmation as expected. Room 301 wouldn't be on the second floor as it starts with 3. With that, the trio Jennings ascended to the second flight of stairs which brought them to the third floor. Upon arrival, they saw their sensei leaning casually against the wall, reading his favorite novel. Sensing their presence, he kept his book and waved at them. Yo, congratulations on making it this far. The tuning exams have just begun. So, good luck. Thank Kashi sensei. Not in Sakura Chorst, Sayuri managing to smirk. Suddenly, his voice turned serious. Don't die on me, Makuto did Ganins. See you in the second test. He gestured towards a set of double doors. As soon as they opened it and entered, they were greeted by the sight of hundreds of Ganins glaring at them. I feel so welcome, Naruto remarkably said sarcastically. Thankfully, there were rookies from his batch as well. Yo, Naruto, long time no see. Kiba greeted. Glad to see you too here, Kiba. Naruto replied. He gave an acknowledging nod to Shino and Hinata, who turned red in his presence. So troublesome. Figures, I see you here as well, Naruto. Shikamaru said. Hey, how's it going on with Team 10? Just fine, Chuji replied with munching on his potato chips bags. Asuma sensei doesn't stop me from eating, and he even treats us to a barbecue at times. Yuno just gave Naruto a puff while turning to talk to her idol, the last to Chiha. Naruto shrugged. Looks like it's about to begin soon enough. Even caught sight of Gara and his siblings, the former of which glared at him with an expression as if he wanted to kill bunnies. Majority of the other were Kusagakure, village hidden in the grass, and Amegakure, village hidden in the rain. And some of the new villages, such as Otogakure, village hidden in the sounds. A Konhanin walked over to the nine rookie and said, Would you please keep it down? You're drawing attention to yourselves and may get yourselves killed. Who are you? Not a question. The spectacled Genin. My name is Yakushi Kabuto from the Iriobutai Medic Corps. It is my seventh time taking the exams. He responded sheepishly. Kiba blurted, Wow, you can. Say that you really suck, huh? Kabuto smirked. The exams are harder than you think. Anyway, I might be able to help you guys on a little with my ninja cards info. Ninja info cards? What are uh, what are those? Sakura asked. Intrigued, the medic pushed up his spectacles as he drew cards from his pouch. Setting them on the floor, he said. They are special cards embodied with information I've been collecting about the exams over the years. It responds to my chakra and gives me the information I need to know. Got any in mind, Sabuko Nagara? Naruto responded almost instantly. Kabuto placed his fingers on the card, which began to spin with chakra flow on it. Words and pictures begin to appear. Sabuko Nagara. This is his mission experiences. He had 30 D ranks, 8 C ranks, and get this, one B rank. His sensei is Baki, and his teammates are Sabuko no Temari and Sabuko no Gankro, who are siblings. The three siblings are children of the Yondaim Kazekage. Interesting to note, he has come out of every single mission without a single scratch. Kabuto said, Uzumaki Naruto. Kiba said, Let's see what you got, though. Naruto is an abro in response. Uzumaki Naruto. This is his mission required experience 60 D ranks, 8 C ranks, and 6 A ranks. Everybody stared at him in awe. To which he shrugged, he sends his Hatake Kakashi and his team as Hiri Uchiha and Haruno Sakura. He is also a Jin. Naruto narrowed his eyes towards Kabuto. He did, how did he know this? Please stop. I would like to keep that to myself. Naruto requested. Kabuto nodded with response and took the cards back to his deck. Well, to conclude this time, exams are tough. Though I would worry about the minor villages like Oto so much. Kabuto said, sliding his glasses further up the bridge of the nose. Suddenly, three shapes blurred towards Kabuto. There were three Otonins who heard Kabuto's command and decided to take action against him. Two of them wore gauntlets on their hands with holes in them. The bigger of the two swung his fist at Kabuto. Naruto grabbed it, grabbed the bus spectacle nin by his sleeve and pulled him out of the way successfully. However, Kabuto's glass cracked as he fell to the floor. Throwing up, Naruto blurred his brows, but he missed unless the gauntlet the Otonin used produced high pitched sound from those holes and uses them to destruct version and cause pain at the same time the frequency is so high that it cracked his glasses so that's why they called Otto Naruto deduced in his head okay sit down and shut up maggots fighting is strictly prohibited save your spunk for the second test yelled the man who appeared 
with several other tunings. He was immediately tall and wore a black bandana. His face was twisted in fierce scowl as he walked up to the front of the room. My name is Morino Ibiki, head of the Konha's torture interrogation force and proctor of the first test. And for now, you're worth standing me. Yes, this is where I'm going to be leaving this part of guys. I hope you like this one and if you do, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. And this is Apollo Chiha and I'm signing out. Peace.